at the center of me. Please let me feel inner peace from my center at the center of me. My heart is open. I am aware in me as a knowing of love, love, love. My heart is open. I am aware in me as a knowing. Let me feel inner peace from my center at the center of me. Please let me feel inner peace from my center at the center of me. My heart is open, I am aware, in me is a knowing of love, love, love. My heart is open, I am aware, in me is a knowing. Thank you, Jackie and Dale. Beautiful. I am aware of me as love. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. Um, thank you all for being here. Good morning, CCL. Um, we have practitioners around the Zoom, which first, before I get to that, I want to do a little prayer. If you will repeat after me, I open my heart to the universe accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and financial abundance. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and complete healing. And so it is. So thank you all for being here. We have practitioners around the Zoom that are holding the high watch. And I know I say this every week, but it's important to reiterate it, to remember the abundance of prayers, the abundance of good and love that is being showered over us by these wonderful practitioners. Kathy Miller is our second practitioner. And what she does is she holds consciousness for today, knowing the truth of the magnificence of who we are. And she also does the prayers for today and the prayers for the week. So any prayers that you send in, she disseminates them, also prays over them, prays for them, 
but disseminates them to all the practitioners so that we can all do the prayers together. So it's a nice, strong bond, and it's a nice, strong knowingness. Our pastoral support, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sherry Daves, who has stepped up, who did a brilliant job last week, and I know we'll do a brilliant job this week. Um, we have the dynamic duo. Uh, we have Felicia Karstens is our third practitioner who is holding consciousness for the service. And our first practitioner is Chuck Karstens. So I want to bring up Chuck Karstens to do our uh, opening invocation. Good morning. It's so nice to see everybody here on this beautiful day as we begin this season of light. And this is a, um, a very special time of year for so many, uh, so many different faiths. And so I invite you to close your eyes. And as we relax into prayer, let us feel God's loving presence. And let us know that this day is a gift from God. For this is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. As this is a good day, a day of peace, of joy, prosperity, and abundance. A day of wholeness and wellness and happiness. And I know that miraculous healing is taking place on this day. As I know that the light of the world has shown up here today in this service. As each and every one is shining so brightly with God's love and God's light. And so I know that this service is the activity of God and that every aspect of this service is divinely inspired and guided. And this service unfolds perfectly and beautifully and wonderfully for each one here today is adding to the magnificence of this service with your love, your support and your beautiful consciousness. And so I am so thankful for the Center for Conscious Living, this wonderful community where we learn that gratitude is the key to happiness. So thankful for all of those in service, making this service on Zoom possible, all of those behind the scenes. So thankful for all of our practitioners and each and every one. So thankful for Reverend Paul stepping up as interim minister and leading this service, knowing that he is divinely guided and divinely supported and divinely inspired, as I know that he absolutely connects with each and everyone here today. And so I'm so thankful for Reverend Carol, the founder of this community, for it is her ins divinely inspired idea, which has brought us all together here today on our spiritual path. And so I am so thankful for this day, for this service and each one here. And so I claim for each one here, health, wealth, happiness, and all of God's love. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Chuck. It's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I want to introduce my the amazing Jackie Walden and Dale Cottrell. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, we weren't quite ready. That's all right. Sorry about that. All right. Okay, let's try this again. Sit, sit, sit with it. Sit, sit, sit with it. Mm -hmm. I got a problem. Sit with it. Not sure where I'm going. Sit with it. Trust and know the answer will flow if I sit with it. Mm -hmm. I don't run around in circles. Get myself so stressed. Things seem to work out better when I focus on how I'm blessed. Make 
making a decision. Trying to choose the right way. Sit with it. Trust and know the answer will follow if I sit with it. Hey. don't have to force the issue when I relax and quiet my mind. It all seems to come together in its own sweet time. I don't have to struggle. It will be revealed. I'm going to trust and know the answer will follow if I sit with it. Hey, body, you body, body, you body. Sofa, or I don't have a hair, or a bar suit, or a hammock, or just sit anywhere. I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit. Oh, I don't have to struggle. Oh, it will be revealed. Yeah. I'm going to trust and know that the answer will flow if I sit with it. That the answer will flow when I sit with it. I'm just gonna sit with. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit with. Just sit with it. Just sit with it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to bring back up our amazing first practitioner, Chuck Karstens, to do our ins inspirational reading and our affirmation. Okay. So today's reading is from 365 Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And this is page 353 called giving. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over. We all wish to receive, but how many of us desire to give? If as Jesus initiated, receiving is the other end of giving, then the more we give, the more we shall receive. Who loses his life shall find it. We should give the best that we have to one another and to the world. This gift of life is made without effort. It is complete abandonment of the self to life. A conscious letting go of all tight strings of our being, a loosening of divine gifts within us. Only when we have learned to give all, we will be in a position to receive it all. Today, I give myself unstingily to life and unloose wellsprings of my being to make complete deliverance of the self to life. This I do spontaneously and with joy, withholding nothing, I will not do this with any hope of reward, but in glad joy for the opportunity to increase my own livingness. Everything that I have belongs to the world. Giving, I will receive the world back into my own consciousness. Today is good. Tomorrow will be even better. And that vista of tomorrow that stretches down the bright eternities of an endless future will be all good. 
the nature of reality cannot change. And so now, if you'll turn to your chat, let us read the affirmation together. I know that God is my unlimited source and I open to my good, remembering that what I receive depends upon what I can believe. Thank you, God, for all the wonderful gifts of abundance in my life. And so it is. Thank and you. So it is. Thank, thank you, Chuck. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your prayers, too. <laughs> so now, Arlen, you guys ready? Okay. Now I want to bring yes. up Arlen and Bobby uh, to tell us about Hanukkah and do a a prayer, if I remember correctly. So who, who wants to go first? Me. Bobby. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, welcome. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. And this holiday commemorates a time in the second century BC when Greco-Syrian rulers were attempting to prevent the Jewish people from practicing their religion. A small band of fighters called the Maccabees defeated an army and reclaimed the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. In seeking to re uh, rededicate the space, they searched for some uh, oil to light a lamp and found just a tiny bit, which they didn't expect to last very long, but it burned for eight days. And that is the, that is the uh, wonderful occurrence that is celebrated in this Festival of Lights. So on Hanukkah, which today is the first day, we light candles on the menorah. Each day we light a candle until all eight are lit, symbolizing the eight days that the oil lasted so long ago, which was a miracle. And this is a very special uh, menorah that I've had for many years. Menorahs come in many shapes and sizes, but this is a Jewish family coming across Ellis Island. And you can see the Statue of Liberty in the back, which holds the shamish. The shamish is higher than all the other candles on the menorah. And it's the first one lit and it's used to light all the others symbolizing the divine presence. And I will light the candle since it is the first day. So. And Hanukkah is the festival of lights and we celebrate the divine light in the world and in, within each one of us. And now Bobby and I will sing the Hanukkah prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech l'olam Asher kishanu b'mitzvotav b'tzivonu l'chadlik ne'er Sorry for the you, not in sync, but you know how Zoom I, is. <laughs> yep, yep. Happy Thank Hanukkah, you both. everyone. Happy, Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you both. <laughs> and what what Hanukkah is, what Christmas is, is it's a remembrance of our connection with the divine. I love the the uh, it's all a spiritual practice. It's all a spiritual practice to keep us centered in God. And I love the idea of the oil because it shows abundance. What the first perception was, was that there's only a little bit of oil and they trusted, they let go and they let God and they had eight days of oil. That is abundance. So thank you both. Thank you for that. Thank you for the remembrance. Thank you for your connection with the divine. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you for the spiritual practice. Thank you. So today, talking about abundance, is I want to talk about abundance. One of, one of the things I want to talk about is abundance. So there's, I got a million books here, so bear with me. Uh, Holmes says, wait a minute. First, 
The Art of Abundance by Dennis Merrick Jones. Brilliant book. Read it. Keep it by your said bedside. What he says, abundance is defined as an extremely plentiful or over-sufficient quantity or supply, an overflowing fullness. Note that this definition doesn't, it does not specify form, only a degree that implies more than enough. Not just enough, but more than enough. This is because abundance is a principle that goes beyond form. It is a universal principle of more than enough, of whatever we can, we can conceive. Abundance is absolute potential available to whoever can uh, actualize it by transforming from potential into solid reality. Abundance is everywhere. There's an abundance of trees. There's an abundance of leaves. There's abundance of sand. sand. There's abundance of planets. There's an abundance of, of stars in the universe. There's abundance of universes. There's an abundance of everything. There is no peace part. Uh, there is no pie to pull from. There is infinite possibility and infinite abundance available to all of us. Holmes says, in foundations, there are 10 core concepts that we, that we talk about. It's the core class of science of mind. And the sixth core concept is the infinite body of spirit is the birthright of every human being. Let me say that again. The infinite bounty of spirit is the birthright of every human being. It is our birthright because we are one with the divine. We are born from the divine. All that the divine is, is all that we are. So all the abundance of the universe, all the abundance of the divine is ours. It is our birthright, a divine right. I am a child of God, created as a finite expression of God. Thus, I am an heir to all the good there is simply because of who I am, simply because I am an expression of God. I am born of the divine. This, bound, this boundless supply of good is my inheritance now and forever. But I can experience, but I can experience any form of it only to the degree that I believe that it is mine. I accept it. I claim it. I embody it. It's our responsibility to embody the knowingness that God is our source, that is God is the giver, and that there is an abundance of everything. We need to stand in the knowingness that it's infinite, that the divine is infinite, the divine givingness is infinite, the divine supply that is all around us that we create from is infinite. I can experience this infinite abundance in my life as love, money, health, talent, fulfillment, or any other form of earth riches my mind can conceive. The abundance is all around us. Holmes calls it the creative milieu. Uh, Eric Butterworth calls it the uh, creative substance, and it's all around us. It is the creative milieu that the divine creates from. And we co-create with the divine by putting our word into the law, with our thinking, our thoughts, our knowingness, our consciousness. Uh, let me find it. Albert Einstein says, we cannot solve a problem with the same thinking we used when we created them. We can't solve the problem with the same thinking we used to create them. He's telling us right there that our thoughts are creative, that 
everything in our lives, everything bar none, we've created. That we create whatever is out there we that we see, that we perceive, that we relate to is our creation from our mind, our thoughts, our beliefs. He also says the world is the world as we have created it is a process of thinking. It can't cannot be changed. It cannot change without changing our thinking. So here's an opportunity to get delved into the abundance of the world, the abundance of all good, financial, emotional, uh, relationships, money, health, wealth, uh, uh, any desire that we have is ours by divine right. The thing of it is, is we have to open up to it. Imagine that all the good in the universe is flowing down to us like a waterfall. Imagine that all of the good is ours. It is ours by divine right. It is our birthright. Now, under that waterfall, are you going to hold a thimble? Or are you going to catch just a thimble full? Because if that's our belief, if we're believing in lack and we're believing in little and we're believing in not enough, that's what shows up in our lives. Einstein said it. It's our thinking. Holmes says, change your thinking, change your life. And that's why we have to be aware of our thinking. Because we've got to know what we're thinking. And the way we know how, our, where, how we're thinking is look out into our lives. And we will see it. And thinking change the thinking to we, I live in an abundant universe. Holmes also says, this is a universe of infinite abundance, spiritual, mental, and physical. The bounty of spirit, this allness of good is limitless and can never be exhausted or depleted. So there is no part that we don't have to worry about. Uh, financial uh, abundance coming to us and not going to somebody else. It's infinite. This law is everybody's law. This principle is everybody's principle. It is the divine's gift to us. People will say, oh, money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil is the downfall. Because when we're standing in God, when we know that God, God is our source, if we stand in that, then we op can open up to the good and more good that is God. We can open up to the, the abundance of health, the abundance of good, the abundance of joy, the abundance of relationships, the abundance of money, the abundance of health. It is all ours by divine right and it's flowing to us waterfall of waterfall of abundance again the art of abundance by dennis merrick jones he says prosperity is a successful flourishing and thriving condition in other words, prosperity is a condition, not a principle. The principle is abundance. It is the effect or manifestation of abundant materializing in a specific form, condition, and degree. The, the inclination of most people is to think that prosperity as money or material possessions, which is in part, which is a part, however, it is far more than that. We can prosper in multitudes of other ways, an abundance of talent, relationships, inner peace, good health, and the time to enjoy it. How much, how often do we say, I don't have the time to do that? I don't have the time to do that. When in actuality, there is an 
abundance of time. And we need to stand in that abundance because the universe conspires for our highest and best. He goes on to say, simply put, abundance is the causative principle of more than enough. Not just enough, more than enough. An abundance. And the prosperity is the equivalent effect. Cause and effect. It's one of the principles of science of mind. Cause and effect. When we stand in the divine, when we stand in God, that's the cause. We stand in the divine and we go, God, I desire an, an infinite supply of money. Knowing that God is, is the giver, is giving always, that that waterfall of abundance is ours. We put that word into the law and the divine gives it. I went through many classes. I went through practitioner training. I went, I've uh, uh, co-facilitated foundations five times, six times with Reverend Carroll. Every single one of those, I put financial freedom. What do you want to get out of this class? Financial freedom. What do you want to get out of this, this workshop? Financial freedom. What do you want to get out of this, this uh, 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 practitioner training? Money, financial freedom. And every time I get to the end of the class and look at, at what, what have I mm, didn't achieve it this time, let's put it in the next one. Let's keep going because I know God is my source. I'm going to keep, keep standing in that God is my source, and this is going to come through for me. And now I am financially independent because I stood in the knowingness that God is the source. That God is the source of all good and more good for all of us. Because there's an abundance of everything. You know that there's, I looked it up, there's $2.10 trillion in circulation. That's astronomical. I, I, can't even, I can't even think of that much money. And it's all available to us. There is no par, pie, there is no peats, that it is all available to us if we'll open up to it and know that the divine is the source of that, that God is the giver, the giver of all the love, the giver of all the peace, the giver of all the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day, give us this day our daily bread. Emmett Fox interprets that, and it's a brilliant interpretation in Power Through Constructive Thinking, another brilliant book. He says that our daily bread is everything that we need and desire, is the, the home, the insurance for the home, the car that we need to get to the, to the job, the job, the money that we make from the job, the food we put on our table, the insurance for our house and our car, all of the things that we need and desire are ours because it's our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And all of that is our daily bread. That's all the givingness of the divine. Because God is the giver. Gives that's God's nature. God can't help but give. And it's in that waterfall. Now, I talked about the thimbleful. Do we want to put a thimbleful under that water? Or do we want to put a 55-gallon drum? Or do we want to put an, a, a tanker under that waterfall? Because it's all ours. And the only thing that's restricting us is our belief, our thinking. It's, an, an, a, it's analogous to a water hose. The water's flowing to it, blowing through beautifully, perfectly, wonderfully. And then we put a kink in the hose. We put a kink in the hose. 
Is the water still flowing? It always flows. It always will flow. But we put a kink in the hose. And when we put that kink in, we're going, wow, man, I, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough love. I don't have a love relationship in my life. I don't have friends that love me. I don't have a community. I don't have this. I don't have. There's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough. And that's the kink we're putting into the hose. If we stand in that there's more than enough and that God is my source, we unkink the hose and the water flows through. It's all our thinking. It's all where we're standing. If we stand in the abundance of the divine, if we stand in God is my source of all of my abundance, all of my good, all of my financial uh, independence, everything. If we stand in God, that will flow to us. And we, we, if we're standing in the divine, then we're open to it. There's no kink in the hose. There's only the divine flow. There's only the divine givingness. Now, the reciprocal to that, and I use the word reciprocal, is the next core concept, core concept seven, is human life demonstrates the reciprocal nature of the universe in the law of attraction and giving and receiving mental equivalent and, uh, and other such principles. Giving and receiving. In this abundance, the way we keep the flow going is by giving. It's God's nature. It's our nature. By giving love, by giving peace, by giving money, by giving uh, in a relationship, giving out into the world, giving our time, giving our support out in the world, we get it back. It's reciprocal. The universe is reciprocal. It's cause and effect. As we put out, we get back. This is a reciprocal universe. As I give, I do receive. Another brilliant book, Eric Butterworth's Spiritual Economics. If there is ever lack of any kind, whether it, whether it is a need of employment or money or for guidance of any, of, of any healing, something is blocking the flow. The most effective remedy for unblocking that flow is give. You may be thinking, but I need to receive. My hands are empty. I need someone to give to me. But you see, under the law of giving, when things get tight, something's got to give. And the tightness is that that squeezing the hose, that kink in the hose, that belief that there isn't enough, that I'm not good enough. Look for some way to start the giving flow. Make a commitment to some kind of giving, not a bargain with God, for that is a kind of uh, pious procrastination. Okay, God, if you do so-and-so, then I will do so-and-so, but you do first. Rather, make a covenant with yourself. It could be an offering of thanks to a place from which you have been receiving spiritual help. It could be a greater giving of your work. It could be doing something for another person who is in need. It could even be simply giving away some seldom use possession, but it's a function of giving. It's a function of letting go and opening up to receiving. Again, 
Butterworth goes on, Jesus clearly articulated the divine law, give and it will be given to you. The divine flow requires but one thing to you, but one thing of you, your, cons your consent to be a receiving channel. We have to open up. How many times, I know it's, I've done it in the past in my life, how many times has somebody given you something? He said, here, you can have this. And you go, oh, no, 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 I don't, I, no, no, I don't need that. I don't, I don't need the money or the whatever it is. And we block the flow. Not only have we blocked the flow for us, but we've blocked the flow for them because they've decided that they want to give and they can't give unless we receive. And it's the same with the divine. The divine can't give us things unless we're open to receiving it. The divine is always giving us, giving us things. That waterfall is constant. But the givingness isn't complete until we receive. We have to be open to the receiving. It is, the, it, it is like the water faucet, which must be opened to the flow in order for the water to pour fo forth freely. Jesus was stressing the need to get into giving consciousness in order to sustain the flow of good into your life. And I'm not talking just about money. I'm talking about the flow of love, the flow of peace, the flow of, of a relationship, the flow of love from one to the other, the flow of life. How much of that waterfall are we willing to receive? Because it's right there. It's always flowing to and through us. We just have to be open to it. Living the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes. There cannot be the slightest question, but the divine will is towards giving us what we want in the way in which we want it, provided we first have complete, completed with the divine, complied, sorry, with the divine will, with its harmony, peace, love, goodness, truth, and beauty. If we have complied with the divine will, the law of cause and effect, which has no purpose of its own to execute, but to ex execute in a blind but intelligent force must bring the pattern of our desire to us. He's talking about the law. He's talking about us putting into the law, our desires, our knowingness, our uh, commitment and knowingness that God is our source. We put that into the law and then the, the law manifests it. It has no emotion. It doesn't care. The law always manifests exactly what we put into it. Our thoughts, our beliefs. Uh, sorry. Buckminster Fuller. Keith Ginther turned me on to this, and I thank him for it because it's brilliant. Buck Mr. Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So the existing model that we've got is, it's, I don't have enough. There's not enough. I need more time. I need more money. I need more people in my lives. I need, I need, I need, I need. That's the existing model. So we need to replace that existing model with something that makes the other obsolete. And that's why we talk about meditation, treatment, and affirmations. We go to God is my source. That's the model that I want to create now. That God is my source. That's my new model. God is my source, and I am worthy of the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is within. That's my new source. That's my thinking. That's what I'm putting into the law. 
That's what I'm creating. That's the new model that I'm putting out there. Is that I am an abundant expression of God. And all the good, more good of God is mine now. I live and move and have my being in God. And if I'm standing there, then my whole entire life is transformed. All of my desires are met. All of all my daily bread is abundant. My finances are abundant. I have love in my life. I have peace in my life. I have more time than I can imagine in my life. Because I'm standing in the divine. I'm standing in that flow. I'm knowing that. God is my source. And God and the universe are abundant. And God is the giver and I'm the receiver. And I give out into the world. It is a flow. It's a cyclical flow. And the only thing that can stop it, that is us. The only thing that can kink that hose is us. So think of God. Think positive. Think knowingness that all of the good, all of the abundance of the divine is mine right here, right now. I open to it. I know it. I stand in it. I live my life in and from it. Because then we're divinely inspired. Money flows to me easily and effortlessly from many different venues. I love that affirmation. Money flows to me easily and effortlessly from many different venues. I put that into the law. And I don't worry, I don't worry about how God's going to do it. That's not my responsibility. It's not mine. It's God's responsibility. And once we put it into the law, the law goes, here you go. And if we're getting a dollar here and a dollar there, and we're going, well, well, well I, I wanted abundance. Well, look at your thinking. Look at the, are you putting a thim, thimble, thimble into that waterfall of, of abundance? Or are you putting a 55-gallon drum in, in it or a, 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 a tanker? Because it's always flowing in abundance. We're deciding how much we're receiving. We're deciding how much we can allow. We have to have the mental equivalence of whatever our desires are. We have to know that the divine is giving us an infinite amount of all of our desires. It's called having the mental equivalent. In Science of Mind, it's a brilliant chapter. Science of Mind. It starts, it's called, uh, hold on. It's called the mental equivalent, and it talks all about us opening to the divine presence. If we lack, if we are poor, if we are without friends, if we are without opportunities, we should be sure to erase from our consciousness any sense of lack. How do we erase that? We put in exactly what Buck Minister Fuller was saying. We put in the opposing. Uh, uh, model. We put in the opposing knowingness because all of the other stuff has been passed down to us. All of the lack, all of the it's not enough, that's been passed down through generations. And it's time to stop it here. And we can do that. It's time to stop it now, to stop the lack and stand in the givingness of God. Now, I want to take this one step further. This Tuesday is Tuesday, Giving Tuesday. And we've got some board members that have declared and have set the intention that they will match any gifts, tithes, any monetary gifts to CCL. They will match it dollar for dollar. So, that's this Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, you can do it now, but, but we'll, we'll, it, it'll end a, a, a Tuesday. Now, what I'm asking you to do is when you give to this, 
put in whatever the note, however you give, PayPal, Venmo, whatever. However you give, put in Giving Tuesday. It's somewhere in the, in the line. If it's a check, put Giving Tuesday in the memo. If it's Venmo, put Giving Tuesday in the, in the, the whatever it is. And some of the board members are matching every dollar that you give to CCL. One more thing, Lynn Twiss, Soul of Money. This is brilliant. Every moment of every day, there are chances to participate in expressing your individual and creative, your individuality and creativity in contributing to your vision of yourself, your family, your community, your city, the, you, your, the world. When we bring this consciousness to our choices about money and use our resources, money, time, talent, to make a stand for what we believe in, we come alive. And I know that all of you stand in the believingness of this community, of CCL that we all wanna make it strong. We want it to thrive. We want it to grow. We want it to be around for a long time because this is our spiritual sustenance, our spiritual food. We come back here week after week after week to share, to love, to, to fill that cup, to overflow that cup. This community builds us up. It lets us know the magnificence of who we are. And here's an opportunity to express our love and our commitment to this community, all of our commitment to this community. Another thing that has been, uh, Mary Law, are you available, sweetie? Yeah. Can you I tell them it. what you what you've committed to uh, to this? Yep, absolutely. And then maybe when you're ready for it, I can talk about sisterhood a little too. I I, I was going to do that too. So go yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Great, thanks. So um, I don't know if you guys can see some of the paintings behind me, but I am a spiritual artist, and one of the things that I offer as a service is called the soul soul sketch. It's a it's a process where I sit with a participant. In this case, it'll be over Zoom. And I just um, use a meditative process to connect with, with your permission with the essence of your soul. And then I ask your soul what information it wants to share with you. And it begins as a visual, which I'll sketch for you. And as I sketch, um, information starts to come through about the meaning of these images. But really, the piece is a way to have a physical a uh, connecting device that's kind of externalized that you can use to have an internal, more conscious connection to your soul and to open up a, a, an energetic pathway through which information from your soul can stream to you in a more conscious manner. So, so the soul sketch itself is actually a pretty profound device, um, like a, a spiritual technology that was given to me by my soul and by the ascended master Yeshua to, um, to help my clients. So um, for this coming week, we're celebrating Giving Tuesday all week long. And I've heard from a few of you and I'll be getting in touch with you on Monday. Um, but anyone who makes a donation to CCL of $100 or more can book a, a complimentary session with me to receive a soul sketch via Zoom, and then I'll mail it to you. So I'm um, wishing you all a wonderful holiday season. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Bobby and Arlene. And thank you, Reverend Paul, for this opportunity. Thank you, Mary. There, there's an example of receiving. I mean, we give and, and we receive. I mean, that alone is, is amazing. And that's just the start of the receiving. That's just the, the initial uh, uh, impetus of the receiving. And there's much more after that. 
So it's Giving Tuesday, please. And uh, Mary said it's all week long. Just uh, uh, delineate, uh, identify the the uh, 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 giving to Giving Tuesday. Um, so thank you. Thank you in advance, because that's what we do in, in treatment. We thank knowing that it is so. We are, I'm so grateful for this community. I'm so grateful for your love, your support. And just thank you. And I love you all. So next we have Sherry Daves uh, doing our offertory blessing. There she is. Look at that beautiful. Yes, if you would all join with me in our offertory prayer. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is mine to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy, knowing that as I give, I do receive. Thank you, Sherry. There's something, one other thing that I want to, that I want to say very briefly. I've talked for a while. I apologize but about blessing, when we bless this gift, knowing, because in the blessing, we recognize and affirm that, it, that that's from the divine. We bless it, we know it, this is a gift from God. And I bless it, bless your bills. When you pay your bills, bless your bills. When your check comes in, bless your check. When you go to work, bless your boss, whether you want to or not. Bless, bless the people around you. Bless the things that are coming into your life. Because it's all a blessing. It all is. Whether it looks like it or not, it is all a blessing. So thank you all. Thank you for <laughs> indulging me for a while. Jackie, you're up, girl. All right. All right. And bless you, Reverend Paul, for that message. So... You know, I know Thanksgiving was a couple of days ago, but still, this is the season. Every day is a day to give thanks. So we do this on the NDRV, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks, give thanks for all that is. Give praise, give praise, give praise, give praise, give praise. For all that is, there will never ever be another day just like this day. So let's give praise now. Say la, say. Oh. 
just like this day. So let's give praise now. Hallelujah. 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 For all that is. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, namaste, namaste for all that is. There will never ever be another day just like this day, so let's give praise now. Jackie and Dale. Thank you. We give grace and praise for all that is. Everything in our lives. It's all God. It's all love. It's all perfection. So we have a blessing that I want to read. Aha! I got a million papers here and a million books. This is for all of us. We normally read it for somebody who's it's their first time. And it's for you also, but it's truly for all of us. If you will repeat after me, welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community. We open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. We celebrate the joyous being that you are. You are a radiant point of light. We are blessed by your presence. Welcome home. So thanks everybody for being here. And that goes out into the world. That's not just here, it, it's, it goes out into the world. So I'm gonna shorten the, the mastermind uh, prayer. Uh, let me see, hold on. The, uh, uh, just repeat after me. Hold on, let me get rid of this. The love of God enfolds me. The mind of God inspires me. The spirit of God enlightens me. The power of God encircles me. I am in God and all is well. <laughs> For I am enthusiastic, excited, expectant, and at peace. <laughs> and if you will turn to your Zoom neighbor and exclaim, I'm grateful God has heard you. So I want to reiterate Giving Tuesday. Give, 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 and receive, 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 receive. receive. So, um, the other thing I want to, and I, Mary and I are, are both going to talk about this. This is how profound this is. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little bit about sisterhood and Mary's going to talk more about Kathy and all of that kind of good stuff. So uh, 
Mary, does that work? Does that work? Yep, that works. All right. All right, let me let me start with this. I because I looked up Sisterhood. I've given to them for years. Um, it's an amazing organization. The membership of Sisterhood Incorporated is dedicated to the cause of helping Burlington County residents. In support of our primary mission of community service, Sisterhood Incorporated engages in a worldwide range of academic, educational, and healthy, healthy health related activities. The core mission of Sisterhood Incorporated is to provide and improve at risk and underserved population, especially in, in Burlington County. This mission is active through the provision of counseling, academic excellence, food, and clothing out, outreach. It is important to note, it is important to note is that the Sisterhood Incorporated is comprised of people that live in the community. It's an amazing organization. So Mary, take it away. Thank you so much, Reverend Paul. Um, Kathy asked me to speak today. She has another commitment, but she said that she's happy to answer questions if anyone wants to reach out to her. Um, for, I think, what, 20, 25 years, she's been coordinating with Reverend Hilda Covington who founded Sisterhood to help families provide Christmas gifts for their kids. Um, whether those gifts um, come directly from parents or are uh, something that grandparents are able to give, it's just something that these kids who are, live in a culture where we see Santa Claus everywhere and gifts galore and, and children's television programming with heaps of gifts under the tree, parents can help stave off that feeling of emptiness, not only for the kids, but imagine not being able to provide that when you see that standard in the world and not being able to, to come close to that. So we've um, been gathering donations and CCL has been the strongest contributor of gifts to the anywhere from 250 to 300 plus families in um, that sisterhood serves for all these years. And in fact, over the years, I've watched Toys for Tots withdraw their funding or their provision of gifts. Um, there was another organization that provided a tremendous amount of support and they stopped and some organizations have shut down and some have said, well, there's need in this other place. So our time with sisterhood is over. But CCL has been steadfast and um, largely a big part of that is Kathy's championing. So I hope I can convey um, the appreciation that's really um, so strong. I mean, we, we all, um, we've come together as a community again and again and again, and people have brought donations of physical toys. People have provided money so that Kathy can shop. And um, I've been to Sisterhood several times. I've met the children. I've seen them. Um, wearing the clothes that were contributed. I've seen them carrying in baby dolls or toy trucks that were contributed. And I see the light in their eyes, these beautiful, beautiful children. What's amazing about sisterhood, sorry about my bird screen. What's amazing about sisterhood is they provide after school care year round. There's tutoring available to the kids. There's um, support for families on multiple levels, food is provided, um, everything that can be done on a shoestring budget to bring a little more ease to the stress of living in poverty in a wealthy nation. So um, I really just want to express first and foremost the deep, deep gratitude for everything that's been done so far to help this community to um, to feel that they're loved and and to um, be able to survive and thrive in this world. We want to give these kids as big a leg up as we can. Just like in our Haiti project, we're trying to give these kids that are living in poverty a boost so that they can come out of that circumstance. In this, we're just trying to bring comfort, comfort of, of the spirit through the through bestowing love. And in this case, it's through this Christmas tradition. So thank you all so very much. You can make it, can we make a donation to CCL Reverend Paul with um, sisterhood written on the, in the, is CCL collecting funds? 
Sure. Yeah. When, when, when you don't. Yeah, exactly. Because that way we know what's going to, to sisterhood. Exactly. If you're if you're tithing to uh, sisterhood, put that either in the in the check memo or in the, the Venmo or PayPal, whatever the thing is, let it let us know that it's going to, to sisterhood. So, a thank you, little Mary. note. Go ahead. Kathy said, I met with Reverend Hilda from Sisterhood yesterday, and she communicated her great, great gratitude to CCL this year and throughout the years. She said again that CCL has been the biggest impact of all churches involved at Christmas. God is good. So thank all you, everyone. Time. Much thank love. You. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Kathy brought this to us to CCL a long time ago, and it is she's a champion for them. She gives throughout the year. She gives furniture. She, you know, if somebody's getting rid of something. She's, you know, giving it to sisterhood. It's a wonderful organization, and it's right here in our community. We're making a difference here in our community. And like Lynn Twist was, was talking about, have your money where do you want to put your money? Where do you want to put your money that's going to make an impact? And this is a place that's going to make an impact. So remember them at this time. Kathy will, she'll be letting us know through, through the weeks uh, about how you can either give money to her and she'll go shopping or about toys and stuffs that, that you know, all of the particulars about outside of, of giving uh, that, you can, that you can do, that, you can, that we can support uh, Sisterhood. And like, like uh, Mary said, and like uh, Kathy said, we're the biggest contributor to this amazing organization. So, um, and remember, as we give, we do receive. Uh, I think that's it. Um, I don't think there are any uh, other uh, announcements. Oh, well, sorry, sorry, Junie, Junie, I apologize. We got one more week, right? Yes, we have one more week. Good, uh, good, good, this good, good. is so exciting. Uh, what, it's perfect, Paul. What, Reverend Paul, what a great service today. Abundance comes from all sorts of sources. It's amazing. Uh, so we have this um, uh, community solar project going on. Um, and I know some people have been a little skeptical about it, but we have not been able to see any shortcomings in it whatsoever. It's an amazing thing. You get to contribute to the health of the planet if you sign up through a link that Marty is going to post um, because you'll get 100% solar energy for your home. If you live in Burlington County or Camden County or Mercer County, if you have an electric bill from PSE&G, you just have to sign up through this link. You will get uh, savings on your electric bill. You will get a hundred dollar gift card. You will get the opportunity to have this company make a donation of two hundred dollars to CCL, and you don't have to write a check. You don't have to pay any fees. You don't have any penalties if you if you decide you don't like it and want to cancel. I mean, it is astounding. And if we hit our target, which we had as a vision early in this project, uh, and we're two thirds of the way there. When we hit our target, Community Solar will give CCL an additional bonus. It's kind of breathtaking um, and wonderful. So please come to a meeting on Monday night, um, find out more about it, ask your questions. Um, I think Marty will post the link to the Zoom chat. It's at six o'clock on Monday. We're coming down to the wire. So if you're thinking about it, let's do it now. Um, we'll answer any of your questions on Monday night or you can just call us. Marty, I hope you post our phone numbers there and um, we'll help you. A lot of folks have signed up and um, by the end of the month, we should have met our target. If you all jump on board, it'll be fun. So um, I hope we did, we, did we post that in the chat? Yes, he did. Okay. I just checked. Okay, great. Yep. Terrific. So I thank you. And and if you live in an apartment, you live in a condo, as long as you have an electric bill, you can participate. Thank you. Thanks, Junie. This is a win, 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 win. Everybody, 
everybody wins out of this. CCLU, the planet, the solar company, it's, it, it's a win-win all the way around. Um, so please partake of this for yourself also, not just for CCL and the planet, but for yourself. You're going to save money on your electric bill. Um, One more now, thing, you don't have to be yes, a member of CCL. You can also help your friends and family or anybody you yeah. know. Say, so, yeah, come join us. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Jeannie. And we have, Jackie, you're up next, right? I don't have my list here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not like I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> All right. That's this song, babe. You got it up. You got it up. All right. Get the band together here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so let there be peace on earth. We're going to do this a little bit uh, differently than we normally would uh, sing this one. As you know, peace begins with me, with you. You want peace? Be peaceful. Let there be peace on earth, peace on earth, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me, let there be peace on earth, peace on earth, let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father. Family all are we. Let us walk with our families in perfect harmony. Let there be peace on earth. Peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. We can sing it. Peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. The peace that was meant to be, let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every single breath I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and to live each moment in perfect harmony. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me, peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. Peace on earth, yeah. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. Hey, hey. Feel good to me. Woo! Hey, come on! <laughs> ah, clap your hands, sing. Thank <laughs> you. 
when never dark clouds are hovering over and the sun is nowhere in sight. But when it seems like the world is falling to pieces, let me be the one to share the light. When never dark clouds are hovering over and the sun is nowhere in sight. And when it seems like the world is falling to pieces, let me be the one to share the light. When this old world seems mean and cold, we do love for humanity. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I'm going to sing again. Whenever dark clouds are hovering over and the sun is nowhere in sight. And when it seems like the world has fallen to pieces, let me be the one to share the light. When this old world seems mean and cold with no love for humanity. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Come on. Let there be peace on earth. Peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. Yeah. Peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. <laughs> Beautiful Jackie and Dale, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Love it. That's a beautiful rendition. I love the love the new rendition. Beautiful. Now let's bring up Chuck Karstens for our concluding effort, our, our concluding prayer. And now if you'll repeat after me, something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my feelings. Life is in my feelings. Life is in all my activities. Life is in all my activities. I receive it. I receive it. I share it. I share it. I am it. I am it. And I accept it. And I accept it. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. And accepting all these glorious gifts from God, we say yes. yes. <laughs> thank you, Chuck. It was brilliant. Oh, thank, thank you. you Alicia. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful Jack service. And Dale. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Thank you, CCL. Thanks, everybody. everybody for being here. Thank you for your contributions, for your love. Everybody did not mute. Everybody did not mute. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Wonderful service. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Hanukkah. Happy Happy Monica. Monica. Happy Monica. Have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Erlen. <laughs> How are you? That was beautiful. Thank you. I love that menorah. That's great. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> My husband got it years ago in Maniac in a specialty shop. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you guys were brilliant. Thank you. Stay down here. Hey, everybody. Hi, Thank you for the beautiful service. Hey, Linda Rica. Hey there. Good luck with that solar thing. That sounds amazing. I wish I could take advantage of it, but I'm a Pennsylvania girl, and um, sure. but you know, I posted I posted accolades for it, but uh, it sounds like a great program. And uh, if anybody else like me uh, can't take advantage of it uh, and happens to be uh, free, we had scheduled a sort of a friends giving dinner at a restaurant in uh, in Pennsylvania on the Pennsylvania side. So if you're interested in the solar thing, go to that. Uh, but if you're not able to do that and you're interested, uh, Stephen Cohen and I and uh, others are getting together for a, a, just a short, you know, restaurant dinner uh, at Maggie's Waterfront. So I just posted that in there. But cool. love <laughs> and miss great. everybody. I have a great week. Bye, Cassandra. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye, Cassandra. Bye. Have a great Bye. week. Bye. Hi, Thank Jack you. and Felicia. How are you doing? That was lovely. Beautiful. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>
All right. Thanks, Judy, Thank for you. all the Thank work you. on the solar. Good move. <laughs> I love that you call me Judy. <laughs> <Beanie. laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> I say it with love. <laughs> I get it. Bye -bye. I agree. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Hello, uh, everyone. Love you guys. Be well, everyone. Hello. Hey, hey Selena. Hi. Just want to say thanks for the service. And Arlen and Bobby did an absolutely fantastic job. Didn't they? So, didn't they? Oh my goodness. It yeah. was beautiful. That beautiful yeah. menorah. I know. And Arlen I loved it. <laughs> and, I loved and Bobby's, um, you know, just information of the reason yeah. for the holiday was just very, yeah. very beautiful yeah. and meaningful. Yes, it affirms abundance. It affirms the divine givingness. It's just, it's it beautiful. The divine light. Yes. It is always shining and yes. giving. Always. Yes. Always shining. Yep. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. So we didn't have a great week, sweetie. You too, everybody. Yes, a blessed week. Hope everybody had a really great time and would love to get together with some people if anybody wants to do walks or